This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is part one about creating your own classes. We use a, a card game example and part one is about the class diagram. First let's look at the classes involved. We have some card game, it can be various card games can fill this class position here and then the, the classes that are used in the game are a card, a card hand, and a card deck. A card, the data members which are private, it has a deck value. We're dealing with a standard 52 card deck and the cards are all numbered 1 through 52 by suit with the suits appearing in alphabetical order. This is before the the deck comes into play where they're randomly shuffled and sorted and dealt out. But in terms of assigning them numbers, they each have a deck value and the suits are in alphabetical order with clubs first and then diamonds, hearts, and spades. And the face values of the cards here, face value, refers to their numeric value within the suit and it goes from 2 to 10 and then the jack, queen, king, and ace are 11, 12, 13, and 14 and the suit values go from 1 to 4. The functions in a card it has a constructor to create a card from a deck value to create a card from a face value and a suit value. There's an equals compare function to compare the card to another object to see if it's a card exactly the same as this card just to illustrate how an equals function um, is created in a class. It's typical to create one but it doesn't really make sense for some of the things we have here like a card hand. Our cards hands will be coming from the same deck. It would be a contradiction to have two hands exactly the same values. Sim similarly, a card deck, we're only dealing with one deck, so we don't really care about comparing decks. We don't have equals functions in those. Then we have some getter functions, also known as ex accessors, to access the private data. We have a, a get deck value. I get face value and I get suit value. We also have get face name and get suit name which are meaningful text names rather than just integer values. There's some two functions that convert a card to various things. Two of them are static although they're not indicated differently here. We'll see in the code two deck value and two face value are static. They can be called without actually having an object of type card. Then the standard two string and there's a two string brief which is a briefer version of the card. And finally down here there's a two suit value as well which also I believe is static. We'll see that when we get in the code. So that's a card. And next in order of logic here would be the card hand. A card hand, it's private data. It has an array list of card objects called cards. The constructor, you have a default constructor that simply gives you an empty card hand that you can then add things to with the add functions or you can use a constructor to get a card hand with sending it an array of deck values representing the cards that you want or an array of cards representing the cards that you want or also an array list of card objects. So quite a bit of variety there and this does illustrate a common thing when you create classes. You have to think about 
how people are going to instantiate each one of your classes and provide the kinds of constructors that would be convenient for people for various scenarios. Then we have an add card and there's two uh, overloaded versions of that. One of them just takes a card to add a card to the hand. The other one takes a deck value, which is an integer, to add a card to the hand. Get size returns the size of the hand. And then there's some has functions to see this is has deck value to see if the hand has a certain deck value. Has face value if it has a certain face value irrespective of suit and if it has a certain suit irrespective of face value. There are three play card. This is how cards come out of the hand. There's a play card with a deck value uh, parameter, a play card with an index into the hand, and that's a zero relative index into the hand, or a play card random that just plays a random card out of the hand. And when cards are played, they're removed from the array list and the size of the, the hand goes down. Then there's two two string functions, a regular one and a brief one. Down here we have a card deck. A card deck has a boolean array of 52 called deck. The booleans the true means that the particular card with that deck value is in the in the card deck right now and false means it's no longer in the deck it's been dealt out of the deck there's an exclusions private uh, data member which is an integer array this is used to create decks that do not have the full 52 cards we'll give an example of a what's called a euchre deck which has the cards nine through ace in all four suits and there's a constructor we'll see in a few seconds here to use that then there's the size that's the amount the number of cards presently still in the deck that have not been dealt out the constructors the card deck itself gives you a full 52 card deck. Card deck with exclusions takes out whatever cards you don't want in the deck as your initial starting point for the deck. There's a deal card that will randomly deal a card from the deck giving you a card object. There's a deal hand where you give it the hand size and it will deal a hand of type card hand a get size, the number of cards currently still in the deck. Reset deck, without having to instantiate a new deck, it goes back to its instantiated state, either the full 52 or the exclusion one, depending on how it was originally instantiated. There's two two strings, a regular one and a brief one. And there's a private data member called, not data member, but private method called init deck. And that takes the exclusions array. That's called by both constructors. Even the default one will pass in a null exclusions array. So nothing will be excluded from the, the default 52 card deck. Looking at the relationships between these classes is, is interesting here. The game class needs to use everything. Cards, the deck, the hands. Notice that a card does not know about anything else. It's used by all, all the other classes, but it has no knowledge that it's being used. 
the card hand knows about cards. You can see there that dependency. However, the card hand does not know about a deck. It doesn't need to. It just needs to know about cards. And it's important to keep these relationships as simple as possible. Otherwise you get into dependency loops, so to speak, that are quite complicated. The card deck needs to know about hands and cards because it will can deal a particular card or deal a hand that contains cards. And now <clears throat> the next tutorials will be looking individually at the card class, the card hand class, and the card deck class.